Hi guys, and today we're going to explore some lesser known history of modern Europe. As you all know, during the Second World War, the Polish people's nation was being destroyed by invasions from the Germans and the Soviets, respectively. And lots of Poles were being dragged into forced labor, deportations, or even killed in concentration camps. After 1945's Potsdam Conference, a huge chunk of Poland, known as the Kresy Wschodnie, meaning Eastern Borderlands, was being annexed by the Soviets in exchange of the recovered territories from Germany. Today we'll talk about Volhynia, a historic region and the former voivodeship of Poland during the interwar period, now situated in the Volyn, Rivne, Ternopil. Jotormir and Chmelnitsky Oblasts, and the Helm region in Poland. The Volyn Voivodeship, bearing the same name, was once part of the Kresy macro region and ruled by the Second Polish Republic for about 20 years. Geographically, Volhynia is located in the Volhynian Podolian upland and Polesian lowland along the Pripyat Valley as part of the vast East European plain, between the western Buck in the west and Ovluch Ridge and the Dnieper Upland in the east. It is near to the region of Galicia, a part of Red Ruthenia, Lesser Poland and Podolia. Historically, Volhynia got its name from the Principality of Halid Volhynia, later known as the Kingdom of Rus which was an emerging Rus state upon the collapse of the Kievan Rus, in which in 1199 Roman the Great united Galicia and Volhynia into a single state, and the state ruled the region until 1349 in the outbreak of the galician volhynian Wars, in which the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania divided up the region between them. King Casimir the the Great took Galicia and Western Volhynia, while Eastern Volhynia together with Kiev came under Lithuanian control. After 1352, most of Volhynia was in the Voivodeship which bore the same name, and the homeland from the Ruthenian Voivodeship, both belonging to the crown of the Polish kingdom, where it remained also after the Union of Lublin between Poland and Lithuania in 1569. By the Treaty of the Union, all of the former Principality of Halic Volhynia became part of Poland. Things didn't change for a lot until the partitions of Poland, in which Russia annexed it and turned it into the Volhynian Governorate after the Third Polish Partition of 1795. The region was also included in the Jewish settlement zone of Russia and remained the most rural area of Russia until the First World War. During the First World War, the Central Powers led by Germany fought fiercely with the Russians in the Eastern Front, pushing them to positions as far as Kiev in spring 1918. The Bolsheviks now gaining partial control of the country after the Russian October Revolution and embroiled into a civil war, signed the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, which granted self-determination of ethnicities like Ukrainians and Poles. However, this didn't last long, as the Germans lost the Great War and Poland immediately established the Second Polish Republic and regained sovereignty under the Treaty of Versailles. However, the eastern borders are unclear. Therefore, Poland, under the leadership of renowned General Józef Piłsudski, started the Polish-Soviet war and gained huge swamps of land, even including cities like Kiev or Minsk, prior to the Soviet retaliation. Nevertheless, the 1921 Peace of Riga granted Poland lands of nowadays western Ukraine and western Belarus, including western Volhynia, with cities like Utsk or Rufne forming the Wojny Wojnowski from 1921 to 1939. However, there came a problem as Ukrainians were the major ethnic group 
residing there, while Poles mostly live in cities only. Volhynia was the site of one of Eastern Europe's most ambitious policies of toleration. Through supporting Ukrainian culture, religious autonomy, and Ukrainization of the Orthodox Church, Pusutsky and his allies wanted to achieve Ukrainian loyalty to the Polish state and to minimize Soviet influences in the borderline region. This approach was gradually abandoned after Pilsudski's death in 1935 as a consequence of increased radical Ukrainian nationalism. After the assassination of prominent Polish politicians, such as Interior Minister Bronisław Pieratsky by members of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists in 1934, Poland started to implement policies to pacify and assimilate the region, most notably converting Orthodox churches into Catholic ones. Violence erupted frequently ever since, and by the Second World War, the Voyn Voivodeship was given to the Soviets as a result of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, and later on occupied by Germans after Operation Barbarossa. The extremist faction of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, led by Stepan Bandera, known as the OUNB, although first allied with the Germans, soon left and established the Ukrainian insurgent army. The UPA started massacring innocent Polish citizens across Volhynia and eastern Galicia in the Volhynian Bloody Sunday. On Sunday, July 11, 1943, the OUN UPA death squads, aided by the local Ukrainian peasants, simultaneously attacked at least 99 Polish settlements within the Voin Voivodeship of the pre war Second Polish Republic under the German occupation. It was a well orchestrated attack on people gathered for a Sunday Mass at Catholic churches, and towns were attacked at different days with tens of churches and chapels burned to the ground. At the crack of dawn that day, UPA detachments, often actively supported by local Ukrainians, simultaneously surrounded and attacked villages in the Vodimiesz Voinsky County, as well as in a part of the Wutsk County. Ukrainians ruthlessly slaughtered Polish civilians and destroyed their homes. Villages were burned to the ground and property was looted. Researchers estimate that on that day alone, the number of Polish victims may have amounted to some 8,000 people, mostly women, children, and the elderly. The perpetrators used bullets, axes, pitchforks, knives, and other weapons. Many Poles were killed in churches. In June 1943, a head commander of the UPA issued a secret directive, saying, We should make a large action of the liquidation of the Polish element. As the German armies withdraw, we should take advantage of this convenient moment for liquidating the entire male population in the age from 16 up to 60 years. We cannot lose this fight. It is necessary at all costs to weaken Polish forces. Villages and settlements lying next to the massive forests should disappear from the face of the earth. Despite this, most of the victims were children and women. In mid-1943, after a wave of killings of Polish civilians, the Poles tried to initiate negotiations with the UPA. The two delegates of the Polish government in exile and AK attempted to negotiate with the UPA leaders, but were captured and murdered on July 10, 1943, in the village of Kustysche. Some sources claim they were tortured before their death. Such atrocities did not end until the Vistula Ode Offensive 
in early 1945, in which over 40,000 to 60,000 Poles were already killed in Volhynia, alongside with 2,000 to 3,000 Ukrainians, by retaliation of the Polish Home Army. After the Second World War, the entire Volhynia, alongside with other parts of Kresy, were given to the Soviet Union, incorporating into the Ukrainian, Belarusian, and Lithuanian SSRs respectively. During the 1944-1946 Polish population transfers, Poles were forcibly resettled, and post-war Soviet expulsion of Poles all contributed to the virtual elimination of a Polish presence in the Volhynian region. Those who remained left Volhynia mostly for the neighboring province of Lublin. After the war, the survivors moved further west to the territories of Lower Silesia. Polish orphans from Volhynia were kept in several orphanages, with the largest of them around Krakow. Several former Polish villages in Volhynia and Eastern Galicia do not exist anymore, and those that remain are in ruins. No major events have been happening in the region since the 1950s, and after the dissolution of the USSR, Volhynia has been an integral part of modern Ukraine. In 2009, the Polish SEM acknowledged the mass killings of Poles in Volhynia not only as a massacre, but a genocide. This event is also the prime reason why Poles and Ukrainians remain bitter relations and attitudes between each other. Next time, I'll talk about the region of Eastern Galicia in Kresy, which included the interbellum voivodeships of Lvov, Stanislavov, and Tarnopol.